So with the FPL deadline being literally tomorrow at four o'clock and there being another one, I think on Friday at half past six, I'm going to share my 13 player watch list with you guys, as well as my team selection for this week and next week. In at number 13 is Thiago Silva, literally the most nailed Chelsea player you can get. You can look at minutes played, matches played, 90 minutes is played, etc. And generally, Silva will be at the top of all of those lists. He's got the confirmed double next week of Manchester City at home and Fulham away. But don't expect goals from this guy, right? His non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes is 0.06. That's bad. Hopefully you'll get a clean sheet, maybe two. In at number 12 is Mac Doherty. Now Spurs do have a double in game week 21. I, in fact, I don't think it's actually completely confirmed, but it's very likely. Doherty for me would be a value pick. Of course, I'd wait another week until I picked him because the, they don't want him next week. He started the last two games, right? It's a bit of a risk, but we know what he can do and he's cheap. In at number 11, I've put Will Yan, someone who I really would love to pick this week, but I probably won't because... My midfield is already too stacked. You can see it on the side there, the likes of Mason Mount, Marcus Rashford, Martinelli, Andreas Pereira, who I'll want to play this week. There's just no room for this guy, but he could be a huge differential for you guys who are looking for one. Look, played the last game, the game before that, 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 and the game before that. Started all of them. Non-penalty expected goal involvement of 0 0.4 which is great. And obviously he plays the two games this week as well. And 5.5 million. It's pretty cheap. In at number 10, we've put Son Hyun Min. Now, I didn't see the Tottenham game that literally just finished at the time of recording, but apparently he played really badly. And looking at his form here over the season, he hasn't done well. Two points in his last game, two points before that, then a zero and a zero, then a two, 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 three. You have to go back about seven games before you find a return from Son. Probably just a blip though. Listen, his non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes is 0 0.5, which is good. We know he's a good finisher. And they've got that potential double in game week 20. The reason he's so far down the list is basically because of that price tag. 11.6 million is a lot of money for someone who just isn't returning at the moment. In at number nine, I've put Bruno. Now, Manchester United look like they have about 50% chance of a double game week, I think, in game week 20 as well. Now, this is as per Ben Krellin's tweet, and it might be like outdated information by the time you watch this. The Man United picks on this list today are based off that 50% chance. Bruno comes all the way down in number nine because again, similar to Son, it's a lot of money when you can get the same kind of asset for cheaper, right? Rashford obviously is already in my team, but we'll see a couple of players later on in the list who could take the place of Bruno for less money. But what you do get with Bruno is 90 minutes, right? Look at all these 90 minutes he's had across the whole season. And it's not just this year, it's last year and the year before. You know what you're getting from him. And now with Ronaldo gone, could you start to see his returns picking up? I think you will. In at number eight, John Stones. We're starting to tap into that Manchester City defence, which is the best in the league, I think, still, if you look at underlying numbers. Stones got, comes at a good price of 5.4 million. It's just the question of, is he nailed in that team, right? You can see he started the last five games in the league for Manchester City, so you would think so, but this is Pep Guardiola we're talking about, right? Who knows? One thing to note about Stones, though, is that his underlying numbers are actually really, really good for a central defender. 0 0.18 non-penalty expected goal involvements per 90 minutes from this guy. And we know what history he's got in double game weeks, right? Right and at number seven, Raheem Sterling, the immediate double game week puts Chelsea players high on my list and I'm sure a lot of your lists out there. I've already got three in my team, so this is why Chelsea players don't come in at the top of my watch list. Now, he's a bit expensive, 9.7 million for what you get. But saying that, his underlying numbers are the best, or at least one of the best in this Chelsea team. Now, I'm recording this video at the time that the Nottingham Forest Chelsea game is being played, so I haven't got the information from there. But you can see that he does like to play football, but doesn't like to get returns. No returns. Well, he had an assist, sorry, against Bournemouth. But before that, no returns in, what's that, about seven games? It's just a lot of money, right? A lot of underlying numbers and no overlying returns. Game weeks four and five, though, would beg to differ. He's got three goals across two games there. Anthony Marshall in at number six. Now, his underlying numbers are insane, right? But that's probably skewed by the fact that he hasn't played as many minutes as a lot of the other players that you might be comparing him to, right? You can see, like, literally no football in the start of the season. 0.79, though, non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes. 
it is what it is that is the number it's big again this pick would be reliant on a double game week being confirmed in game week 20 but at 6.7 million he would have to be on your list right one thing i would be wary of is like will he keep his place in the team especially if united got him by a striker which they're talking about on my list but would only be a temporary option i'm sure into the top five now manuel akanji looks like he cemented his place in that manchester city defense in every single game pretty much since he got to the club a double game week against manchester united and tottenham hotspur in game week 20 and a price tag of just five million cheaper than john stones puts him way above stones on my list although his non-penalty expected goal involvement is a lot lower than stones in fact i think it's less than half 0.07 in at number four kai Havertz. if i had a chelsea spot in my team to burn i would be bringing this guy in. his non-penalty expected goal involvement of 0.4 isn't through the roof for a striker but it does look like that striker position is his to lose now with that chelsea team and with two fixtures coming up immediately man city and fulham he looks set to score some points in at number three kevin de bruyne his numbers are excellent it looks like he's literally the only player apart from harland who's nailed on in that team now what has happened to Cancelo? what has happened to foden don't talk to me about those two no returns in his last three games for man city expect that to change his underlying numbers are insane 0.71 non-penalty expected goal involvements per 90 minutes a lot of that is weighted towards the assist side rather than the goal side if i had a man city spot or if i had the money to spend he would be top of my watch list without a shadow of a doubt in at number two i've put anthony for man united now hear me out we spoke about bruno earlier on with his price tag being a little bit too high Anthony's underlying numbers are 0.4 non-penalty expected goal involvements per 90 minutes. Similar to Bruno, his, I believe, are weighted more towards the goal side as well because we know he likes a shot. If you've watched this guy play, he shoots from absolutely anywhere. I've already got Rashford in my team. I've already got an injured Dallo. It's probably not even worth mentioning that. So if this double game week gets confirmed, I would like a third Manchester, City, Manchester United player, sorry. And Anthony could be the one for me in fact i think he is going to be the one stick around for the team selection i'll show you how it's all going to work out for me in at number one ivan perisic i'm sure it's going to be a controversial choice but hear me out tottenham have the double game week perisic has now started the last one two three four games in the league for spurs his underlying numbers for a defender at insane 0.4 non-penalty expected goal involvement for 90 minutes he's on corners etc i mean i missed the last game against Aston Villa where admittedly they lost 2-0 so maybe he's had a stinker and maybe I should take him off my watch list so that that is something I still need to watch because Conte could just drop him right but if that hasn't happened 5.5 million for a double game weaker with those numbers playing for a Spurs team who although they have just lost to Villa 2-0 the defensive numbers aren't bad apart from like goals conceded I just think you've got to be in it to win it with this guy and I want to be in it Moving on to team selection for game week 19 then, and it looks like I'm rolling my transfer, right? Because I've got a strong team and a decent bench, and we've got plans for game week 20, of which we will do the team selection for that week in this video as well. Kepa, Aretha Balaga in goal, Manchester City at home, and Fulham away the double game week. Come on, let's go. Then we've got Kieran, Trippier, Arsenal away. Isn't a great fixture to be fair, but this is a guy who you just can't drop from your team, right? He's the best defender in the game, bar none. Then we've got Cancelo away at Chelsea. Cancelo is a tricky one. He hasn't started the last two games for Manchester City, Whereas previous to those last two games, it looked like he was the most nailed on Manchester City player, let alone defender. So it's a tricky one. I need to decide this over the next 24 hours if I'm starting this guy or Dallo, basically. Then we got Kukurea, double game week, Manchester City, Fulham away as well. Please get me a clean sheet now at the time of recording. The Nottingham Forest game is on. And please get me a clean sheet or two next week. I will love you forever. Money makes a mount. Manchester City and Fulham as well. Same fixtures, oddly enough, as Kukurea. If I had my time again, I probably would have Havertz in this third Chelsea spot. But I don't mind Mount. I don't expect him to get much from the Manchester City game, but I'm hoping for a return against Fulham. And then it's time to say bye-bye. Andreas Pereira, double game weaker. I've got my two Fulham players. Spoilers, we'll talk about Mitrovic in a second. But Andreas is the second best Fulham player without a doubt. Maybe arguably the first best. Martinelli, Newcastle at home. That's a tough fixture, but he's in great form. I think he scored in his last two fixtures or a goal and an assist at least. 
He's great. Then we got Rashford against Bournemouth at home. That is a great fixture, by the way. Manchester United are looking good. Erling Haaland then, Chelsea away. He will probably be my captain, I think, even though we've got a double game weaker. And it's a bit of an odd thing to think, but his numbers are just so much better than anyone else, apart from maybe Mitrovic in my team. But Mitrovic is one yellow card away from a suspension. Now, that only lasts 19 game weeks, so I believe the suspension would roll into the Chelsea game if he got booked in the Leicester game and that's a risk that I might not take I haven't quite fully decided the armband's on him at the moment but it might and it probably will be on Haaland then we got Harry Kane disappointed me this week at the time of recording so I don't really want to talk about him too much other than to say he needs to do better or he's gone. My bench looks like this with Ward and then Foden, right? Foden's in a similar boat to Cancelo in my team where I'm just hoping that they get back in the team because it's going to be so difficult for me to sell them and get another Manchester City player in, especially directly. I'd have to do it indirectly because I would want KDB in that spot, etc, etc. So maybe a Kane out, KDB in situation. But that wouldn't happen straight away, right? Because of the double game week that Tottenham have got coming up. So it's a tricky situation I'm in there. Foden, as it stands, is on my bench. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Maybe swapping in with Martinelli would be the shout before the deadline. Let me know in the comments below. Then we've got Dallo. Again, Dallo could come in for Cancelo, but I would need some more information to do that. Then we've got Patterson last on the bench. Hopefully, you won't need him at all. So, this is what the team could look like for game week 20. And shout out to FPL.team, this beautiful website, which is what like me and a lot of other people use sometimes to plan ahead in FPL. Kepa Aretha Balaga against Crystal Palace at home. Trippier against Fulham at home. I'd expect big points there. I'm going to have to wait and see, aren't I, with Cancelo? If he doesn't play this week, this game week 20 team selection will change and I might have to sell him. I don't want to, saying it out loud sounds so bad, but I might have to sell him. We've bought in Ivan Perisic, Arsenal at home and Man City away. Yes, they're the two best teams in the league, but it's a double game week. Come on. Then we've got Dallo and then we've got Anthony. So you can see I've rolled my transfer last week and I've made two free transfers this week being Perisic in and Anthony in, Kukurea out and Mount out. Let me know what you think of that down below. Foden starting, then Martinelli, then Rashford, then Haaland captain, and Kane vice captain. Obviously, this is a week in advance. A lot of this could change. We spoke about Cancelo, for example. If he doesn't play this week, things are going to have to happen. Same with Foden. Like It's just going to be an absolute nightmare. This was what the bench would be looking like. So the bench would be good. Ward, Mitrovic, Andreas, and Patterson. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe. See you soon.